and be a sports themed hero. Ba -da 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 -da. Hi, I'm Wild Bill. I'm sports correspondent for Redbeard Pirate Radio. And today, I have been given leave by myself, the editor, to talk about pro wrestling. Hope you guys find some of this interesting. Wrestling, pro wrestling as opposed to real wrestling, which I'll define when I'm done here, is written to appeal to a 12-year-old. I'm not kidding. Superheroes, invisible men, surprise sneak attacks by bad guys whose theme music is conveniently queued up and playing at just the right moment for greatest theatrical effect in an arena with 30,000 asses in seats. Bad guys, good guys, the sexual fantasies of 12-year-old males explored like a carnival ride, which it is. And most of us men have a pristine, unspoilt 12-year-old at our core. We buy into the glitz and the glamour, the sexual over and undertones, the fantasy that good will ultimately triumph over evil, which, oddly, never seems to quite happen. <laughs> the prettiest, the smallest, or the coolest looking, or the most sympathetic wrestler, for example, Kerry Von Erich, Sting, Shawn Michaels, was or is called the face, short for baby face, the good guy in other words. He doesn't cheat. He believes in honest mono a mono competition within defined parameters. He listens to the referee. He is here because he stands in for you as a force for good. He's your boy. His enemy is the heel, Ric Flair. Eddie, we rob, we cheat, we steal, Guerrero. Bubba, boss man, Rogers. Kamala, Abdullah. Paul, big show, White. Mark, sexual, chocolate, Henry. The heel is a bad guy, not above cheating against ill-defined rules. The guy who shows the foreign object to the crowd before he beans the face with it. He bites your wounds because he loves the taste of blood. He threatens announcers. He insults the fans. There's a lot more to it, of course, because pro wrestling, when done well, is a perfect combination of stunt show, carnival, and theatrical performance. And our inner 12-year-old buys in. We buy into a casket match where our loser is buried alive, never to be seen again until next week. We buy into someone bashing someone with a 16-pound maul and not being arrested on the spot for assault with a deadly weapon. We buy into barbed wire dynamite booby-trapped ring ropes. We buy into mysterious ninja green goo, or red goo, affecting the face in different ways during a match. A Ugandan headhunter, hungry for white man flesh. <gasps> An undertaker who can't be defeated who commands the forces of darkness in order to entertain our inner 12-year-old. So accepting for the moment that pro wrestling is, in essence, performing art, who's the best? Who was or is the best pro wrestling talent of all time? The Nature Boy? The Undertaker? The Devil's Favorite Demon? The ring valets traded between players like sex toys, an ongoing trope, which I would like to see reverse sometime. The announcer, the cameraman, the writers, the boss. Many of us honor Bobby the Brain Heenan as one of the greats. His quick mind and quick actions on behalf of his managed or favorite in-ring talents are undeniably among the best in trade. I talk about him in a few seconds. He deserves my respect as an artist. Even so, there have been many top performers at all levels, except one. In my mind, after everything is considered, it all comes down to two men, and arguably three, who are in direct competition for the title of the best in wrestling. This is an open letter to one of those three persons, which I also posted as a comment below his weekly podcast. An open letter to Jim Cornette, 
from Wild Bill Cox. Something that might apply in the other circumstances, Jim. We both rate Bobby Heenan number one. But, listening to his interviews, he was a businessman, not a driven creative talent. Extremely good at his trade, he turned it off when he left the building. I think, perhaps, this gives you the edge. That surprises me, as I had not really considered that you and he were on the same level. But Bobby was, in essence, however, a top employee. You lived pro wrestling. That's a big gap in responsibility, continuity, and management. Sure, he was the best at his job when on the clock. But you were, and in my mind still are, wrestling personified. Photographer, scripter, teacher, taskmaster, onstage performer, coordinator, reporter, and owner. Huh? Propagandist? Mm -hmm. Seen in that light, I am sorry to say, poor Bobby still shines, but you blind us. Your only competition is the big man. And even there, you win because you knew when to let go. Love you, Bobby the Brain. No offense or disrespect intended. If wrestling were a band, Jim, Bobby would be a top sideman, the saxophone soloist, the star of the night, you, Jim, would be the band's agent, the songwriter, the arranger, a roadie, the driver, standing for the keyboardist at need, and the guy who kept the other talents from dying of alcohol or drug-related stupidity so the band could go on. See the difference? I hate to say this about any talent other than myself, but you, sir, rock. So, and that's my comment. So who and what is Jim Cornette's opposition for that title of Best in Wrestling? Because I obviously hold him highest. Vincent K. McMahon, who I mentioned above or alluded to, the only person who operates on a larger scale than Jim's best effort. In fact, VKM has employed both other contenders for the title, whereas they have not been able to employ him. That gives him serious street cred. He's wrestled matches against other top performers. He's been, oh, there's a Billy Joel song, agent, announcer, talent, writer, concept artist, and most of the time, owner, all without us knowing. That's important to what I have to say next. He lied on his mother's soul before the Senate, and they let him go. Now he's a billionaire, or so he says. And his wife runs a super PAC that promotes ownership rights over workers' rights. In his company, he plays off the various factions against one another. He has layers of initiation, just like a religious cult. And he's never out of mindset, not even when alone. I can guarantee this. As another madman, I'm pretty sure I know what he's like. VKM is, in my mind the greatest, most convincing liar the world has yet produced. Nothing he says could either be believed or trusted. Everything in his mind is spin or spun. He will never tell the truth to anyone. Now, I've known folks like that, golly. In some places, they dominate the scene. Art, in particular, is the refuge of broken souls. And pro wrestling is a performing art. It's been long attended by the usual severe drug problems, suicides, tragedies, atrocities, and untimely deaths of other arts. Oh yes, pro wrestling has it all. Which brings me, there's a segue for you, to the only other man who might contend with Jim Cornette and Vincent K. McMahon for the title of Best in Wrestling. Paul Heyman. Brilliant. Smooth as Teflon, or crusty as an ashtray uses a cupcake disposal two weeks ago. Paul is a credible talent, both on the mic and off it. 
Paul, too, has done it all. He and Jim have done everything Vincent K. McMahon has done except for one. They've never hired him. But as I said before, Jim Cornette has also done something none of the others has done, and for my way of thinking, it is the great achievement of any businessman. He knew when to let go. Moving on about my defining the difference between wrestling and pro wrestling, the only people who really understand are the real deal guys. Kurt Angle, Ronda Rousey, Kenny Shamrock, Dan Severin, Mark Henry, Wild Bill. For Redbeard and Pirate Radio, remember Redbeard and Pirate Radio, the artistic resistance begins now. Money is not the object. Talent.